Okay. Um, okay. Welcome to the Merstham Community Q and A with councillors uh, on the 11th of the 6th, 2020. Uh, my name is Marcus Fulcher, and I'm the Community Engagement Officer for the Merstham Community Facility. And I'm here with two of your councillors, if they'd like to introduce themselves. Uh, I'm Councillor Frank Kelly, uh, Councillor for Hooley, Merstham and Isen, and also Deputy Mayor for Raggett and Bounds. And good morning everyone, my name is Bob Gardner, I'm the County Councillor for Merstham and Bansted South, which stretches from uh, Lower Kingswood right the way over to uh, Netherland Hill and Merstham and everything in between. Thank you. Great. Okay, so we're going to ask a few resident questions that we've collected from Facebook today. Um, and we're going to split them between um, uh, Frank and Bob. Um, if that's uh, if that's going to be okay with you guys yeah um there will be some overlap because some of the questions that have been asked are not county or some of the some of the questions that frank's got down to answer will be will be county so we'll mix and match and come in if that's okay yeah absolutely that's absolutely fine uh we've got someone else who just joined us uh if you'd like to introduce yourself charlotte hi everybody it's charlotte hi, from mcft how are you going yeah, yeah very well, good, Charlotte. Thank you for joining us. Okay, should we uh, crack on with the first questions then? Yep. Certainly. You, you okay. lead the way, Marcus. Okay, right. Uh, so, first off, we have Kerry Ann Mackey who's asking, What is being done about the broken glass on Worcester Green? Um, that's, that's, that's obviously a borough issue. It's, I've contacted Green Spaces this morning, who are obviously our parks department come along um, all I really need to know is it sort of where it is if it you know if it's going to be uh, a major sort of clear up or if it's something that can be done quite quickly mm -hmm. and that's something that we can do um, all I'll say with that sort of thing going forwards is that uh, if someone contacts the council via the Twitter feed for green spaces yeah. or by dropping an email at green spaces at right yeah. advanced did yeah we can get that cleared up pretty quickly because it's we have a team that are out at the moment obviously with, with the coronavirus at the moment they're not everywhere yeah but those are the sort of things we need to make sure that we get rid of because obviously if, if it's a green space area we've got yeah. children playing on it and we've got animals going on it so yeah sure. if i can get the details of where that is i'll get that one chased up as soon as possible okay and we we can also publish the uh, the green spaces twitter and email on our website too yeah. so get that shared or, or, or you can you can have my details and they, they can contact myself or one of the other three councillors yeah that's great thanks Frank. Okay, so next on the list we have uh, Anne Batty, who's asking, uh, when is the building work on Merston Park School going to start? Last year the money for it was taken for another school and the parents were promised it last year. Okay, well, uh, do you want to take that first, Bob, and I'll finish it off? Yes, by all means, Frank. On, I, um, I, I've been, when you provide this with the questions, I got in touch with a cabinet member for education yesterday evening i was hoping to get a response and in fact i will be uh, checking my other laptop council laptop to see if i've got a response from her yet um but i know the planning application is in and frank will be able to advise us on what stage that planning application is okay. um but of course sadly with the uh, delays that have been caused by COVID 19 Mm -hmm. everything's been thrown into disarray mm -hmm. uh, and the education department so here we have uh, a response mm -hmm. hot off the press <laughs> um, uh, so look, there's, um, no 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 actual dates as yet right um, but both schools obviously will be um, the existing school will be developed and there is uh, a senior school going to be developed on the site right um the modular buildings um are already open on on the site in fact frank and i were up there uh, during the week to try and evaluate whether or not any work has been started and i also had an involvement with st nicholas's before um it closed down Mm -hmm. and moved to starhurst in dorking mm -hmm. but you know we are we are pushing i don't know if you can give us an update on the uh, 
the planning permission, Frank? Um, well, yeah, a, a pre-application has gone in. Um, and if anyone's near the school, they, they will see that the signs have gone up to put in uh, second level modular classrooms mm -hmm. and the surrounding buildings. Obviously, this is to preempt the building of the school. Um, unfortunately, I can't speak too much on it because I'm actually a member of the planning committee. So um, I have to be very careful in what I'm, what I'm saying. However, um, people can comment. They can actually go online and see the planning application. And what we're going to be trying to do is with residents in the surrounding area, because we fully understand there are going to be some issues with it especially once the building work does start because mm -hmm. obviously there are going to be vehicles going in and out of the site it is going to generate more pupils going to and from the school so we need to that residents are aware of what's going on um but as i'm sure as soon as there are some full, fully developed plans and, and the, the surrey yeah come out with those plans i'm sure there'll be a, a consultation with local residents and an opportunity to see it obviously it, it's it's taken a long time that there's no getting away from that and we need to get to a school that fully functions you know mm -hmm. we can't have pupils in modular classrooms forever mm -hmm. they're not the, they're not the right thing we need to have a proper school built with mm -hmm. proper grounds mm -hmm. um so, so again we'll be working with local residents and yeah. we want local residents to give us their comments once the plans come out and if they go to the council website and, and, and type in on the planning department yes yeah. see the plan all we've got in place at the moment okay unfortunately the headmaster sadly passed away yeah. so that that also didn't help along with the, the covid situation that's happening at the moment but we are pushing forward because we need to have schools in the area we know we've got really good primary schools in merston but we need to have a good secondary schools. the children that we that we have in merston we want them to stay in merston if they've got their own comprehensive school they can walk to school you know, we can get away from the number of cars that are driving around the area because We'll, we'll know it's a safe way of getting them to and from school. We'll yeah. make sure that, that Surrey do it the correct way. And we as borough councillors will be monitoring that and working alongside them. Okay. And all these websites that um, <clears throat> Frank's been talking about uh, with the council and leaving comments on the website, we'll publish those on our website and on our Twitter feed yeah. so people can access those. Um, thanks again, Frank. Uh, okay, so moving on. Uh, Lucinda Martin asks, uh, what are you doing about dog waste on Dunnable Road? We could really use a dog waste bin there as people don't pick up their waste on their way to Firstfield Woods and it's a health hazard because it's as it's so close to the school. Um, okay. And just following on from that, sorry guys, um, Jackie England, Debbie Allen, Julie Jones and Nick O'Reilly have also um, uh, put forward uh, a concern about that and they would also like more dog bins in Merston. Yeah, um, as, a, as a dog owner myself, I know this is a big problem. We seem to have uh, people that will either do, will actually bag their dog poo up and leave it hanging somewhere mm -hmm. for, for the dog poo fairy, whether that be on someone's fence yeah. or near a bin yeah. or in a tree. For some, some the reason, they, they feel that way it's getting taken away. They, some of them do put them in bins, but doesn't seem to be a lot of them. Um, I've spoken to the leader of the council yesterday regarding this. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, they don't install dog poo bins anymore. Right. Okay. How come? However, why is that? If, you, if, you bag, if I, 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 I couldn't get an answer exactly why it was, but right. I think it's to do with the emptying. But right. what I, what he did say was that normal, normal refuse bins. You yeah. can put your waste in those normal refuse bins as long as it's bagged properly, of course. Yeah. Okay. Um, and yes, we, we're happy to look into putting in more more waste bins. Yeah. But as you can imagine, we don't have a huge team going around and emptying those. Mm -hmm. So we have to put them in strategic places. They may not look the best places, mm -hmm. but they have to be places where a team can get to a lot easier. But I'm happy to look at both Radstock Way and Delaval Road, obviously they're, they're, they're high passenger areas as it were, because yeah. they're quite long roads, they're near the schools. So yeah. I'm happy to work with, with those residents to look at areas that they think would be good for, the, for putting bins in. And, and we can look at um, having that as a community project as it were, maybe looking at some of the community infrastructure levy funding that there is, okay. and seeing if we can do this 
as a sort of community exercise. But if, if any, of the, any of the other residents think there's other roads that they might need bins in, you know, mm. please get in contact and let's let's draw up a list of where would be good to cite this number of bins. Because it's a horrible thing to, to go out for a walk and, and see, you know, pieces left behind. But it's not only dog waste, it's it's litter in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, if if we have to put in if we have to put in twenty bins to make sure that everyone gets rid of their litter correctly, yeah. then, then let's look at trying to put in twenty bins. Sure. And I'm quite happy to meet residents and, and have, when we get the hub open, yeah. Have them come down and, and have this as something that they want to speak about. Sure. Because yeah. I, I, I think it's, it's not the nicest thing. We, you know, when you take your dog out for a walk and it it, yeah. it, it does what it's supposed to do, you can yeah. take it home with you, or I double bag it and, and, and put it in a bin mm -hmm. as I go. But there there we need to sort of work together to try and solve this as a problem. Mm, definitely. But, but do you know what? Can I can I I mean it's nothing sure, to do with county, but I would say that <coughs> I, I find it very disappointing that somebody would go to the extent of owning the dog, mm. would take it out for its walks, but then won't stop and pick up the waste and take it home with them. Mm. And the number of cars that I see stopping alongside the road, having a sandwich, yeah. and throwing the waste out the car rather yeah. than take the, the rubbish home with them. It's endemic of a an attitude we have to be responsible for our own actions yeah. and the, the, the footprint that we leave in Merston, particularly for foot, uh, for Merston residents mm -hmm. is our own it's our own doorstep mm -hmm. would you let your dog go to the toilet on your doorstep and, and not pick it up of course you wouldn't yeah so don't do it in Merston. yeah don't yeah. do it anywhere in fact I mean, that, 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 that's a part of trying to create a functioning community i suppose just so yes. things like that yeah and I, and I think as I think as well, what we need to do is we need to be working with the schools as well. Mm -hmm. it, it's all is almost getting the children shaming the parents mm -hmm. because most of the time it would be the parents walking the dog. Mm -hmm. But if their children were saying, them, you know, almost nagging them, saying, oh, "Come on, let, let, make sure you are doing this and make sure." You're doing this. And I'm quite happy even to look into sort of if we, you know, funding some some dog bags that people can come and pick up. Yeah, sure you know as sure. a, a, a load at the hub in, in bags so people could take them away so they always had them mm -hmm. you know i know they're not i know they're not expensive but for some people you know it, buying a pound's worth of dog bags may be an expensive thing to go and do constantly sure Maybe so it's something we should do in the pub. Work with, i'm quite happy to work with the community to sort mm -hmm. of think of ways we can do this because we've done a lot of work in merston with trying to make it where we want it to be we need to keep moving forward and, and these sort of small blights they may seem to some people mm. are big issues to other people yeah and we need to make sure that we tackle these as much as all the big issues that are going on at the moment you know yeah. to someone it may seem very trivial yeah that there's there's, there's a, a bit of dog mess on the road mm. but if you're walking on that road constantly and you're seeing it all the time it mm. becomes a big issue yeah, definitely. and I think those are the sort of things we need to be working on as a community. Yeah. Is is just saying to people, it's not it's not right, it's not right, it's not fair for other people yeah. to have to see it, and 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 as a council to have to come up and clear it up afterwards because sure. it's an expense and yeah. it's and it's your your council tax that is paying to clear up for someone else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have we have done a couple of little bits in the past through the um, Raven had dog bags and it, it did work quite well actually people did come and collect them so and it does raise raise the issue so like you say that's probably quite an interesting one to do so with a combination of that <clears throat> and maybe some more bins mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and the message take your rubbish home as well kind of thing i think you yeah. could probably do pretty well i mean there's some good litter pick going on at the moment as well with people yeah yeah uh, the, the, the litter picking is, is, is amazing and i've got um i've got the local scouts who were supposed to do one in march who were going to come and do one in september and and i'm trying to make it so we can do a few more of those sort of community picks yeah you know do the big areas but i think again you were saying about the placards of you know don't leave your road again that's something that we can involve the schools in mm. you know almost like when they do the 20 miles an hour sign outside their school is get the children to make some signs up that we can put in strategic places yeah yeah as as just reminders to people yeah sure 
again, it's worth going back to residents and finding out which are the high traffic areas, so we know where the best places yeah. are. Yeah. At the, at the end of at the end of the day, we we the, the councillor team. There's only three of us, and we cover Merston, and Hooley, and Nevin. So we we don't see everything. No. And and as I will speak to, we rely on residents yeah. helping us to yeah. help them. You know, yeah. if residents keep coming out and saying, right, this area is a problem, we can then look at it. Mm-hmm. If they don't tell us, and it's and it's and it's making sure we marry up the two. So we need residents complaining to us mm-hmm. that there's an issue. Say, you know, we've got Delaval Road as an issue now. We'll go back and look at it. Yeah. But if they don't, if they don't tell us there's a problem, we can think we can suddenly think everything's hunky dory. Yeah. And, and residents, so we need to make sure that residents are aware that we're the people. As long as, as long as, as well as repeating it to the council, but they could always come to us as councillors and say, you know, would you look at A, B, and C? Mm-hmm. Sure. And, that, and that, that's also a good point to to uh, to raise with uh, in regards to how important these Q and As are to get residents questions yeah. for you guys directly. So, yeah. and also and also to know who we are. Yeah, sure. Because some, so, you know, for some residents, you know, for the best one in the world, we may not see all residents at, throughout mm-hmm. the year. Mm-hmm. And so we need to make sure that residents, if they're walking around the, from Merston and they see me, I'm quite happy for a resident to stop me and say, you, you know, I'm like a councillor. Yes. Okay. Can I talk to you about this? A two meter space. Yeah. As in social, yeah. Make sure they stay two metres away. But, you know, I'm, I'm still happy to, to talk to it. And I've done it in the past. I've, I've actually almost held impromptu surgeries. Yeah. While, while getting... That, and that's the benefit of having borough councillors who live in in the area where they are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, okay, sorry guys, we've got to move on. Uh, just no, no, fine. Okay, that's all right. Okay, um, actually following on from the uh, litter conversation we were just having, um, Liz Brains and Julian Mills ask, um, are there going to be more litter bins installed and more fines given out for persistent littering? Um, as I said about the litter bins before, that, that's something we're going to look at. Mm-hmm. Uh, unfortunately, with regards to fines, it's having a presence there at the time of littering. Um, I have had residents say, well, I'll take a photograph of someone and pass it on to you. Mm-hmm. Well, the problem with that is you, you, it, it's, it's how that sets with the law with regards to taking someone's photograph. If it's if it is some obviously dumping a huge amount then please let us know we'll come along we, yeah. we can get details of who it is but what we're trying to do is we're trying to get away from people littering in the first place yeah. um I've, I've got no problem with, with if i see someone littering to say oh you know you know make sure you put that in the bin but it, it, it's it's it people will, sometimes people will find it difficult to, to do that sort of thing there are fines for littering you know they're quite heavy fines i think it's up to a thousand pounds it is very difficult to lit to find someone straight away however uh, if it is called the line we can close and, and if we can gain information on on who it is that is littering those you know the rubbish mm-hmm. there there are steps we can take against them but it's it's a very hard area to um to sort of deal with however if we get more bins we might be able to get away from from some of the littering that goes on and a bit of education i can't say we can solve it but we can try sure as a community and residents they, they can they can document when they see those that littering happening and they can contact you directly about those yeah i i have i've had i've had residents do that before they've, they've let me know when they when they found rubbish and, and we've gone along and, and had a look at it and, and tried to find out ways of stopping it yeah okay that's great okay um moving on then uh we have carla wise uh she's asking um can the bund be cut down in summer instead of waiting until september yeah this is um i've, I've spoken to the portfolio holder regarding this and I come back. um i've got a feeling it might be something to do with the flowering of the plants yeah um, and i think a lot of cutting back of that sort of thing would happen in um in in sort of autumn time mm-hmm. um i think that i think the bund because it 
it's it sort of attracts a lot of wildlife and a lot of natural areas. Yeah. Was there it some is, um, some uh, some butterfly conversation uh, conversation uh, conservation work happening there? Yeah, there's, there, it's it's one of those areas along with some of the other areas. We really want to encourage local residents to be involved in in sort of planting and and having wildflowers and you know a lot of the stuff that we do in Merston is, is to make the green spaces look look nicer for people because we've got a huge amount of green space. So yeah. I, I would rather we wait until everything is starting to sort of die down for the winter time before we do any of the sort of cutting back work. Right. However, that being said, if, if sort of Merston parks uh, and green space area want to take it on as a project and look at it and say to us, well, look, ecologically, it's fine to cut back. Mm -hmm. Then we can look at it with the green spaces. Okay. Because the, the more that we can be doing things right for everyone is, is great. But, we want to make sure that these these sort of sites grow. Mm -hmm. So it might be the fact that we, it, it might be better to wait until autumn time to okay. cut these sort of things back and have them ready for next year. So so what you're saying is it's um it's, it's healthy for the ecosystem in Merston for its wildlife for it to be left until September. Yeah, okay. you know we we've seen at the moment with with COVID that you know obviously the air is getting cleaner because there's less people driving, mm -hmm. and and the more trees and plants and uh, and sort of natural environment we can encourage in Merston, the, the yeah. better it will look. Okay. Because we want people coming in and using the parks and the areas. We want them to look nice. We yeah. want everything to look nice. And, yeah. and as much as possible, yeah. continue to grow and proliferate. Yeah. Okay. All right. Great. Thanks, Frank. Um, okay. This is a, another question involving um, wild growth. Uh, what Linda Williams is asking: What is being done about the grass length on Brook Road? Um, the amount of cow parsley spreading from the uncut grass is affecting people shielding as they are unable to enjoy their gardens. Um, I, again, I've spoken to Green Spaces this morning. Um, obviously, they don't have a full team around at the moment, and a lot of the grass that they would normally be cutting. They're prioritizing areas um, that stop people seeing, especially around junctions, roundabouts, those sort of areas. So they aren't really getting to these sort of areas. Mm -hmm. So what I would say is, if possible, try and you know leave it and we'll try and get the green spaces to it. Mm -hmm. If someone is happy to go and you know ha see if they can tidy it up, and that's fine. If not, we as councillors, we've done it before in the past, we've gone down and and tidied up areas that needed to be looked at um but i I've, I've asked them to go and have a look at it so hopefully they'll come back to me and say to me what they can do okay. but if not you know we're happy to go down and and sort of tidy up these areas um with local resident support okay 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 i think we're going to move on now from um from uh, merston's wildlife and uh we focus on the wreck and the development of the wreck. Um, so Tony Patching is asking, what is happening with the redevelopment of the wreck? Um, any chance of more recycle bins down there? Yeah, that, that, I think that follows on to the one after that as well, which is the toilet facilities. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to my council, my Surrey County Council colleague, but this is another one that I'll be answering. Um, as as most people in Merston who've met me over the last couple of years will know. We had 1.6 million put aside to upgrade the wreck mm -hmm. as part of the overall redevelopment of Merston. Um, um, and alongside that, we're working with the football club to upgrade their facilities and put in a new 3G pitch. Um, we've got some excellent plans for the wreck. Unfortunately, they, it happened right in the middle of COVID-19 that we were having our meetings about trying to get it out to residents to let them know what we were going to do. Mm -hmm. So everything's being put back a little bit. I have spoken to the portfolio holder, but we are still going to go ahead with getting this stuff done, getting it down on paper. Unfortunately, it means it's going to take a bit longer. Mm -hmm. We're looking at um, upgrading the actual wreck as a whole, not just in piecemeal, yeah. putting in better parking, putting in for people to walk around, which will be um, designed for disabled access as well as ambulatory access. Mm -hmm. There'll be access for bicycles, for skateboards, all those sort of things for parents. Mm -hmm. There'll be seating areas. We're going to looking at having a sensory garden put in, yeah. uh, a trim trail, yeah. better football facilities, tennis yeah. facilities. 
what we're trying to do is we're trying to make something that is better than anywhere else in the borough mm -hmm. because we as Merston councillors feel that the residents deserve something great. Unfortunately, it should have been started early part of this year, mm -hmm. but hopefully once the, the, the easing starts, I'll be able to get back and have some meetings. Okay. Obviously, we'll be looking at having resident consultations, yeah. hopefully in the football club and in the hub, and we'll want resident input. But what we've already done before that is whenever councillors have attended somewhere, we've asked residents for what they want, what they need. So a lot of those ideas have been incorporated. Um, with regards to recycling bins, I'm not sure that I'd be too happy about having a lot of recycling bins there. We're looking, we'll be looking at putting in the basic ones, obviously paper, cans, card, those sort of things. Mm -hmm. But we already have an excellent bring site behind the hub. Yep. Which I think really works for residents and it's, and it's easy for r rubbish to be taken away from there that we can and i want to look at some in there putting as much more as we can get away with into that site without overfilling it um i think the recreation ground is more about getting residents out mm -hmm. and having residents actually able to spend time you know hopefully when we get some nice sunny weather being out there groups going out there the local scouts pubs the mm -hmm. brownies you know and 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 as many community groups using it as possible Mm -hmm. alongside using the hub using the library so it's, it's all tied together as one okay um okay moving on to battle bridge park now um jenny young asks are there any plans to build a new skate ramp at battle bridge park uh yeah I've, I've again i've spoken to the leader of the council regarding this um technically where the scout the scout park would skate park would been actually another political area it's actually in red hill east unfortunately in local council our areas are not square they're, they're funny wiggly line shapes mm -hmm. and the most of them actually ends where the railway bridge is having said that we we want to take this forward we need we need to make sure that there is something to replace the original skate park which a lot of a lot of people used at all sorts of ages it wasn't just teenage boys and girls it was young people young children were going there Mm -hmm. uh, as, as residents will know it got burnt and it's very hard to replace with a non-burnable surface that actually works and doesn't break up mm -hmm. and the cost would be around about a hundred thousand mm pounds -hmm. which as you can imagine is a, is a lot of money for uh, a thing like that yeah it's a fair chunk as a council we, we don't really have that much of residents money and it, and it is residents money we'd be using to buy that and yeah. to have it fitted yeah but what we're going what we'd like to look at is we're going to look with lo any local community groups that want to be involved is looking at one of the community infrastructure levy grants these are grants that are given to the count are monies that are given to the council when someone builds uh properties mm -hmm. and that money is to be used for community projects right so with uh the per jenny that asked about it if she or her friends would like to get together as a group and say we would like to get a skate park i'm very happy and meet with them and help them go through the paperwork okay. so that they can submit an application to see if we can get funding towards it and and get the right sort of thing in for as many as residents as possible in the right area because it may be the fact that the skate park where it was wasn't in the right place okay so there's, there's a lot of stuff but again we're happy to take this forward as merston councillors with residents okay um, and and you're happy for us to pass on your email to jenny yes so yeah. well at the end of the day my my council email address is public is public sure. record anyway so sure. you can find it just by searching my name but yes i'm happy for you to pass it on okay brilliant um and just going back to um with the rec development with the uh the rest mm -hmm. of the forum um it might be best if we publish a sign up sheet for that uh attached yep. to this this meeting video so people can sign up directly from from here so thank yeah. you the more, at the end of the day the more residents that are that are involved in the in the process yeah uh, the better it works for everyone it, it's not just us coming along and saying we're doing this for the rec mm -hmm. what i want to be able to say is this is what you've asked for mm -hmm. this is what we've been able to provide for you and, and 1.6 million isn't a huge amount of money in terms of big projects you know we spent 50 million pounds on 
on the redevelopment of the local system. So what I mean is, but it will give us something we can be proud of. And yeah. on top of that, with working with the football club at Merstham, yeah. we can have, have more use by residents because we're looking at putting in a uh, 3G, which means that it can be used all year round by local residents, local teams. Sure. And we can increase the amount of people that are using it, which it brings more people in, which in turn means residents uh, from outside will be coming in, spending their money here and helping to boost Merstham's economy. Yeah, sure. Um, just also want to say a, a thank you to Merston Football Club for using their facilities as a makeshift food bank at the moment. So, um, thank you guys for doing that. Um, okay. Well, uh, Merston Cricket Club as well. Yeah, and the Cricket Club. Yep, sure. Um, okay, so moving on now. Um, okay, Sarah Anastasia, uh, she's asking, when is the pavement approaching the back of the train station along Brook Road going to be repaired? Thanks. I don't know where you want to take this one, Frank. No, I, I'm only joking. Um, I I know the section you're talking about. Mm -hmm. There is a dispute because we had uh, British Rail uh, admit liability because it was their vehicles that were actually mounting the pavement and crushing it. Right. And we repaired it, and they did it again and again. Mm -hmm. um, so we fenced it off. There is uh, a legal action going against British Rail to actually get them to fund the repair. Okay. And it's not actually a repair, it's a matter of putting bollards there to stop them being able to mount the footpath and do right. it again. So I know it's taken a long time. Yeah. Uh, one of our council officers near, lives nearby and he's the project leader and it's a thorn in his side every time he comes out to his front door and sees it. So, um, you know, it's, it's right at the forefront of our action, but uh, it's legal actions take some time. They admitted liability. I don't know why they just don't provide the funds and let us get on with it. Mm, sure. Okay. So, so that's an ongoing legal process right now. Then it is indeed. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Bob. Um, okay. This could be another one for you, Bob. Um, Carla Wise. Uh, she asks, "What is being done about the condition of the road underneath the bridge along Nutfield?" Yeah, I, I, I've reported it. I've taken the cabinet member up there and the uh, chief highways officer to explain the condition. It's like a third world country. It's unacceptable to me yeah. and I'm pushing. It's only a matter of getting the funding, but more importantly, getting the highways team back to working and, and redoing roads. Okay. It's, it's down to be resurfaced. Um, it's exacerbated by the Heavy, heavy vehicles that are going up and down this road as well to turn up to yeah. the little depot on the right. Yeah, okay. I mean, I, I'm, I'm guessing a lot of these questions are going to be dependent on staffing numbers, which are going to be a bit lower right now due to the pandemic. Well, they, they are, but we need to focus on it. And it's one of my pet hates is, is poor road surfaces. Mm. Um, and um, Unfortunately as well, with Merston being an arterial road for M25, M23, a23 you know north and south it's it's one of those roads that it has an awful lot of traffic on it mm -hmm. you know we, we we know we get a lot of people cutting through merston to avoid the traffic in red hill in the mornings i know at the moment it's, it's quiet yeah but once the traffic goes back you will see the increase with us being a popular area with yeah. having the tra the mainline train station uh, yeah. and a lot of as it were, free parking for non-residents. Yeah. Okay. So that, uh, we've, we've got the same. We've got the same situation with the high streets and, and lots of the little roads. We we do push as much as possible, you know, and and with Bob's support to try and get as much and um, re replaced as as possible. But it's it is difficult and it is a constant ongoing battle for ourselves. Sure. And we and again, with us being local councillors, we drive on those roads as well, so we know. We, we know the situation that these, these roads are in. Okay, thanks, thanks, guys. Um, that actually dovetails quite nicely into um, Jim Farringdon's question. Um, he asked, he asks, can there be a blanket speed limit of twenty miles an hour on the estate? I know it won't necessarily work, but it might stop people doing forty and slow them down to thirty. Thanks. Yeah, I I, I would love to see a, a blanket speed limit in, of 20 miles an hour in the area and indeed outside schools. Mm -hmm. um, 
what we need, first of all, if we're going to change the road traffic orders in the area, we need to have something to hang that request upon. Right. So petition from the residents in that area um, would, well, in all areas surrounding that, that area would, would help support that. Right. However, the, the final decision, even if we got a petition going, the final decision is from Surrey Police. Right. They would have to support that application right. and then they would have to be able to enforce that uh, traffic order. Okay. Um, so it, it's really, if we want it done, let's all get together and get a petition going okay. and then we could try and force the police to actually enforce it. I know in the past when I put a traffic order together, the police have been reluctant to support the application, but you know what? Unless we try, nothing will change. Sure. Okay. Um, um, do, you, do you have a general general idea of how many signatures would be needed for the petition to be worthwhile? No, but it's got to be a, a, a large number. I mean, if you've got a thousand houses in there, I would expect certainly something like 70, 60 to 70 signatures. Okay. But it it would have to be in the thousands rather than the few hundreds. Okay, um, I think I think as well what we need to look at maybe is um, getting groups setting up community speed watches as well. Well, that was another that thing. sort of will help. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, that's, go on. Uh, <laughs> I was coming on to that. I'll, I'll go away. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, looking down the other questions, and I can make your life easier. Um, there's, there's lots of questions about speeding. Yeah, there is. Uh, Mons, Mons and Avenue, um, the estate being used as a racetrack. Yep. Um, Worcester Green and, and such like. And do you know what? The, the trouble is, all of these people speeding, all of them are local residents. You don't just stumble on these roads. Yeah. And sooner or later, these local residents that are speeding are going to run over a neighbor's child mm -hmm. or kill a neighbor's dog. Mm -hmm. And unless we start taking responsibility for our own actions, we're never going to solve anything. I can change speed limits. I can put um, uh, speed traffic tables. I can put chicanes. But... Unfortunately, the people that are speeding see these as a challenge, and we can't get the police behind every single lamppost waiting to jump out. So I, I'm going to recommend that we we run through um, MCFT and through the hub. Why don't we actually get applications for a speed watch or community uh, speed watch? The police will provide all the equipment. They'll provide all the training. And those people can actually move from area to area with it because they're local residents mm -hmm. and they will be reporting local residents and then they can actually take names and register or registration numbers and the police will actually then go and turn up at the people's houses yeah. and actually warn them and tell them if they receive a report again then they'll be subject to a prosecution okay. that way the power is actually in the hands of the people on the community speed watch and just should uh, should we want to try something like that out? Um, I Marcus, I, I do have uh, because I bought many years ago. I do have a, a, a speed gun, you know, a cam, uh, a, a radar gun yep. that I, I'm quite happy to make available to MCFT. Great, and, and they can try it out and see whether or not it works, but. The police will provide all the training and all the equipment and all the jackets and everything else. And I think we should take it formally to the police, really. Great. OK, um, and if anyone's interested in joining that team, they can leave a, uh, a comment below the video just so we can um, sign you up and gauge your interest. Um, thanks, Bob. Um, OK, so moving on to the, the Tesco car park at Watercolour. Uh, well, can I come? Can I come just back a little bit? Because sure. um, uh, Liz Mills asked about the bikes and everything at Worcester Green, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and yep. wanting speed bumps and, yep. and stuff. Yep. Yep. Um, I, I got to tell you, and I know it's going to sound crazy to residents when when prices are involved, 
but the price of one speed bump to be installed is twelve thousand pounds right just for a speed bump so right. you imagine if we put speed bumps in the area which actually all these speed bumps do is create traffic noise because vehicles going over they create noise and they would drive the neighbors that are living near, near a speed bump crazy so i would come away from speed bumps mm -hmm. um and then there was a question uh, about could the two halves of worsted green be turned into a one-way system yeah um frank and i were down by the school uh, down by the uh the, the merston park school mm -hmm. uh, looking at whether or not we should try and turn that road into um into a one-way system right and the only thing i would say is when you turn these roads into a one-way system one thing you do put a big tick against is people speed faster down them because they only have to worry about traffic going one way mm -hmm. so it actually doesn't solve the problem okay. it actually exacerbates the issue okay. so um uh, one-way systems won't help in those areas and you mentioned and I, this is one where actually i have no involvement in whatsoever but watercolors is believe it or not outside of my division uh, the only thing i would say anyone wanting to stop um the the dangerous parking uh, on yellow lines mm -hmm. um really they need to be contacting their their local county councillor which isn't me um it it is subject of course to parking enforcement um mm. and that comes back to the borough council um and, and a real pet hate of mine and there's something if any surrey police or indeed uh, david monroe is the police and crime commissioner for surrey is listening please can he he uh, give our parking people the powers to actually issue uh, tickets because if it's not a parking warden and and the people are not parking on double yellow mm -hmm. lines parking on single yellow lines they cannot enforce mm -hmm. which is crazy because the police won't allow the powers to pass on to our people it's been promised and it's not happened and i know it drives the borough council team with frank kelly drives them crazy because they can put warning notices on but they can't actually issue a parking ticket do you want to add to that frank yeah it's it, it's 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 a real nightmare we we get calls all the time and and we just say to people look if we had the power just think of how much more revenue we'd be bringing in from all those people watercolors is a is a is, is a prime example they have a huge, great space at the front of their store, which originally I think was a water fountain. Yeah, for for people to look at, um, and we have, and I know that councillors have spoken to them in the past, and they could take that out easy enough and put in spaces. But when watercolours originally put in Tesco's, it was for local residents to walk to, but residents realised that they could drive and park up there because there there was no enforcement. And even when the double yellow lines went down, I know I can drive through there any day of the week and there'll be at least three or four cars parked on the double yellow lines. Mm -hmm. But it, it does take hard enforcement and it does take the police being asked to go around there. And, and for the best one in the world, we don't have a huge police force for, for the number of residents. And there's a lot of things for them to deal with. But agreeing, agreeing with what Bob's just said, things to calm traffic down are expensive. You know, if, if we're looking at putting in speed tables and they're costing twelve thousand pounds imagine what we could do in merston with twelve thousand pounds for each speed pump we do the more we the more we get residents to take action on their on things that like i said earlier things that are blighting their lives the better it's going to be and the easier it's going to be because if you start getting letters through your door from the police saying you know your local your local speed watch which you're obviously going to know is going to be a local resident have seen you speeding on this occasion you'll get prosecuted people are going to take notice eventually mm -hmm. and we're going to get less and less of this and the more residents we can get involved in looking after their area yep. the better it will be for everyone you know most of us and I, and I say this to everyone and i bang on and i'm probably going to get bored pe people bored of me saying it when i first moved to merston 
and I first became a counsellor, the one thing I was told was, it's not the best place to live. It's a horrible place. It's full of this. It's full of that. And, and myself, and I, myself and Councillor Crone, when he was a councillor, we banged on about it for years, that it was a lovely place to be. It was a village, and it still is a village. Three generations of the same family wanting to live here proves that people want to be here. People wanting to come from London to live in this village. And we need to keep this as a village. And the more residents getting involved in looking after their village, the more residents will want to be involved in it. And yeah. that's what we have shown through this whole crisis that has gone on. We've had hundreds of residents saying, oh, I can help with this. I can help with that. And, mm. and that's what we need to keep doing in Merston. I shout it from the rooftops that I wouldn't want to be anywhere else but living in Merston. Mm. I can walk around the town at midnight and not feel worried about it. I can walk down to the shops and see residents that I know and chat to residents that I know. We as councillors are welcomed as councillors to come along and meet residents. Residents want to speak to us. And this thing with the community speed watch and with the rubbish and with the dog mess and, and all these things that we can get residents involved in working together, we can solve all these problems. And people like yourselves at the MCFT, Age Concern, and, and the youth groups and uh, YMCA are all working together. And the more we can get groups and people working together, the better it's going to be for everyone. And we can get away from the old fashioned notion that Merston doesn't deserve anything. And I think that's the whole thing about being a councillor and being in these Q&As is that we can tell residents that we feel the same and, mm -hmm. and, and we want to work with you to do the same things. Mm -hmm. Sure. And you know, the money is there. Let's use it to get things done. The only thing I would add to that, um, for residents of watercolours, I don't know whether they have their own residence association, but if they have, then print up some little, you know, please do not park here notices and put them on vehicles signed by the residence association. We do it in other areas in, in my division and it works because they actually realise it's local people complaining about local parking. Yep. We, we, we empower local people. Uh, but most importantly, I mean, Frank talks about us as local councillors. We are often, uh, as you know, because we are, uh, we get very heavily involved with MCFT and the hub. We're often at the hub. Um, and if you see us walking around, and you want to talk to us, stop us and talk to us. We are, we are normal people. We only, we only stepped up to this, this role um, because we we got so fed up with our local area not being represented uh, and I, when i say we're normal people i mean i'm not a normal person i don't know about frank but <laughs> I, I i know no frank's a, a you know really, really great guy and locally uh, he does an awful lot of work but come and see us we're in the hub come and talk to us yep <clears throat> absolutely um, okay, well, I think that's a good note to end things this week. Thanks a lot, councillors, for joining us. Uh, thank, thank you, you very much, Marcus. Us too. Uh, thank, thank you for everyone who's uh, 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 put in questions for this Q and A, and also a special uh, thanks to the Help the Hand Facebook group. Well, one for. last plug, though, Marcus. Yeah, if sure. anyone's got any road issues or any issues with regard to Surrey County Council, yeah. can they please report it because? We, we can't have a lot of people expect us to report issues if they empower themselves and report it on Surrey County Council yeah. report it line they can do everything from out, from road conditions to hedges abandoned vehicles and I know there's a couple of heavy duty vehicles that haven't moved near Portland Drive for at least six to nine months can the owners of those remove them because I know that the uh, the police are taking an interest in them and they might as well remove them before official action takes place. But come and see us, yep. report all the issues and stay safe. Okay. Well, that's a great message to end on. Thanks, uh, thanks guys. Thanks again. And I'll see you all next time. Thank you. Thanks a lot. See, see you later. later. Bye.